And finally, new rule, if you want to win my vote, don't give me the ick. <laughs> you know what the ick is, right? It's a, a term mostly used in the dating world to describe that moment when one of the people, usually the man, does something so icky that the woman cannot forgive it or forget it. <laughs> like sending a dick pic or... <laughs> being mean to the waitress, paying for dinner with a coupon, <laughs> getting his mother to call you when you dump him, <laughs> asking for sex in baby voice. <laughs> Once you give her the ick, it's a wrap. <laughs> now... <clears throat> <clears throat> Now, in politics, Donald Trump has pioneered the concept of the ick <laughs> to frontiers no one ever thought possible. And that is saying a lot, considering that we once had to learn that John Edwards was going down on his five-month pregnant mistress, because who doesn't love to see a politician kiss a baby? <laughs> but, But Trump, he is in a league of his own, from the way he talks about his daughter to the way he talks about his dick. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee you. From doing disabled voice to humping the flag to last week getting into a shoving match in front of the eternal flame. And don't get me started on jerking off two guys at once. <laughs> What I'm saying is, don't underestimate the ick. <laughs> it's... it's what's going to decide this election, and it's the best thing Democrats have going for them, which, of course, was the cue for the far left to say, hold my beer. <laughs> A couple of weeks ago, Bobby Kennedy, scion of the most storied dynasty in Democratic Party history, dropped out of the presidential race and threw his support not to the Democrat, but to Trump. And everyone all at once said the same thing. Bobby Kennedy did something weird? <laughs> a Kennedy in league with a Republican? Why, that's like ordering white wine with bear. <laughs> Now look, I like Bobby and always will. And there are things he has been right about that no one else would touch. But yes, I also think he's weird. <laughs> I couldn't support him for president. His wife is Cheryl Hines, who Larry David was quoted as describing as the best person I've ever met, the one person in Hollywood who doesn't have a single enemy. Well, now she does. <laughs> Because she didn't throw her husband under the bus when her husband made a decision about something which she's made plain she disagrees with, but that didn't satisfy the obnoxious posers on the aforementioned far left. Thousands tweet screamed at Cheryl things like, how do you live with yourself? Do better. I can't even enjoy the episodes of Curb Your Enthusiasm with you in them anymore. <laughs> it's no wonder Larry divorced you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's a character on TV, but okay. <laughs> the tweet that got the most attention was from actor Bradley Whitford, who wrote, Hey, Cheryl Hines, way to stay silent while your lunatic husband throws his support behind the adjudicated rapist who brags about stripping women of their fundamental rights. Gutsy. Great example for the kids. Profile and courage. Yeah. Well, you know what I think is not gutsy? Mansplaining to a woman, but of course not to her face. <laughs> How she should sacrifice her marriage. Also, you could read something on Twitter that met with your approval. You want to know why I have a bug up my ass about the left more than I used to? It's shit like this. There's an ugliness they never used to have. The liberals I grew up respecting, 
None of them are like this. Going after the wife? Even the mafia doesn't do that. There's a lot of people these days who I call liberals in theory. <laughs> in theory, they hate bullying. Terrible. In practice, their attitude is, it's not bullying when I stick your head in the toilet. <laughs> in theory, liberals are compassionate. In practice, this guy can't even understand one of the most basic dilemmas common to all humans, that when you're married, sometimes you have to swallow some shit. <laughs> You know, take one for the team, oh, do things you don't want to do. <laughs> do things you don't want to do, like, I don't know, have children. <laughs> Look, marriage is like a bong. For it to work, you have to take a few hits. <laughs> I've never even been married, and I know this, that it's a delicate dance. It's a delicate dance, and you're not gonna love everything your spouse says and does. But I promise you, no couples counselor has ever said, have you tried screaming at each other? <laughs> and that is what is so galling about this. It's exactly what Barack Obama had just told the Democrats at their convention not to do. Our politics have become so polarized these days that all of us across the political spectrum seem so quick to assume the worst in others. Unless they agree with us on every single issue, we start thinking that the only way to win is to scold and shame and out-yell the other side. Mm -hmm. um, Bradley, did you go to the bathroom or something when that came on? <laughs> because it's almost like he was talking to you directly, like by name. Don't scold, don't shame, don't out yell. Clinton had the same message. I urge you to meet people where they are. I urge you not to demean them, treat them with respect. And that's the thing, the actual politicians of the Democratic Party are generally a pretty sane crop of people. The worst of them are leagues better than the worst Republicans. The Democratic politicians are not the ones calling to defend the police and other goofy stuff. But the kind of people who are, the kind of people who are always howling on social media, yeah, that's who gives a lot of people the ick when they hear liberal. And look, I get it. Trump is awful. He's not Hitler, but he is possibly the worst person since Hitler. <laughs> I kid, Don. We'd love to have you on the show. <laughs> but it's true. But it's true. He drives people insane. I get it. And you know what? I used to know Bradley a little bit. He wasn't this guy. And while he may relish writing Cheryl Hines off, I'm not writing him off, because that's not the way to handle this. President Obama, if you would, one more time, please. Our fellow citizens deserve the same grace we hope they'll extend to us. So I get it, Trump makes us crazy, he just does. I found a gray hair myself the other day. <laughs> And I might need glasses soon. But, <laughs> but we have to resist the siren call of being an asshole. You don't like Trump, then don't be like him.